Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with Hasna's not me and today we're beginning the discussion of a new topic which is the orbit so guys before i get started with the video i do request you all to subscribe to my channel let's get started so basically what we're talking about is this structure right here in the skull these two openings we're going to discuss these openings today and the contents that lie within this opening we begin talking about the orbit a couple of initial features that i want to touch about the orbit is that you'll notice that the orbit if you see it is conical shaped it's like a cone like that as you can see the apex of the uh, cone is going all the way behind uh, you can see it's in the uh, superior orbital fissures medial end is known as the apex of this orbit right so you can see that is the apex and the base is formed by the opening of the orbit apart from that the orbit not just has an apex and a base but also it has a four walls including the roof the floor medial wall and a lateral wall i'm sure that's quite simple for you to uh, understand uh, the eyeball is the major content in your uh, orbit i want you to remember this is let's suppose the eyeball you are viewing this is the iris which is viewing is from the front and this is the posterior side of the eye and let's suppose this is the orbit so what you'll notice about the orbit that its axis is running backwards and medially if you compare the axis of the eyeball which is joining the anterior and posterior ends of the eyeball and the axis of the orbit there is an angle existing of about 20 to 25 degrees now let's talk about its individual walls let's talk about the roof so it's very obvious that the roof was formed by the orbital plates of the frontal bone which you remember we talked about anterior cranial fossa anteriorly and if you go posterior you will realize that the uh, lesser wing of the sphenoid is also contributing to forming the roof of the orbit uh, posteriorly and in the roof there are a couple of important features i want you to remember let's suppose this is medial this is lateral on the anterolateral part there is going to be a fossa known as a lacrimal fossa and it will be housing the lacrimal gland whereas anteromedially on the roof there will be a, a structure known as a trochlear fossa trochlear fossa has a very special function that it forms a pulley for the superior oblique muscle we'll talk about this in the later videos and another important feature is that where the roof meets the medial wall at their junction you'll see right here i hope you can see that this is known as the optic canal this lies in the uh junction of the roof and the medial wall so these important features are in relation to the roof let's talk about for the lateral wall over here what bone do you think you can see this is the zygomatic bone so the orbital surface of the zygomatic bone is forming the lateral wall anteriorly and posteriorly if you see will be the anterior surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone posteriorly will be forming your lateral wall so you can see right here this is your a uh, greater wing of the sphenoids anterior surface contributing to the formation of lateral wall all right so if you have a skull in your hand you'll understand this better the important features existing in the lateral wall include the first important feature is that in the junction of the roof and the lateral wall in the posterior part of this lateral wall you'll see this fissure this uh, large opening which is known as the superior orbital fissure and we've talked about this in the uh, middle cranial fossa and its uh, contents that it carries are very important so make sure you learn them and then another important feature that you'll see here is the foramen for the zygomatic nerve that you see in the zygomatic bone now let's talk about the floor the floor is basically sloping upwards and medially and it is formed mainly by the what do you think is lying here this is the maxilla bone so the orbital surface of the maxilla bone is forming the floor and another bone that forms uh, the floor is right over here laterally you can see the zygomatic bones also uh, surface orbital surface is also forming a part of the floor and if you go a little posteriorly in the floor of about over here you will see that the orbital process of the palatine bone is found at the posterior angle so you can now you know that the floor is formed by the orbital surface of the maxilla and then the orbital surface of the zygomatic and more posteriorly the orbital process of the palatine bone all right palatine bone coming from below from the palate area special features in the floor include that the inferior orbital fissure which is a large opening it occupies the junction between the lateral wall and the floor so you can see right here this is the inferior orbital fissure this is at the uh, junction of the lateral wall and the floor of the orbit and its important structure that pass through the inferior orbital fissure include your infraorbital nerve and vessels and the zygomatic nerve and the orbital branches of the pterygopalatine ganglion and just anterior to this inferior orbital fissure like passing forwards in relation to it is the infraorbital groove this is the groove for the nerves and vessels of the same name all right 
moving on to the medial wall of the orbit so in this skull right here uh, some parts are missing but remember over here I'll, uh, you have to remember four bones because in the medial wall the most bones are present all right so uh, first you can see obviously there's going to be the maxilla uh, the frontal process of the maxilla and then behind that is the lacrimal bone behind that is the orbital plate of the ethmoid bone and most posteriorly is the body of sphenoid bone so you can see coming from anterior to posterior you see the maxilla then the lacrimal bone then the the ethmoid bone you can see the ethmoid bone was lying right here that is constituting the medial wall and the most posteriorly is the body of the sphenoid bone so remember there is a most extensive amount of bones in the medial wall uh, the important features in the medial wall are the lacrimal groove. This is formed over the maxilla and lacrimal bones. And this groove leads to the inferior meatus of the nose. It carries a nasolacrimal duct. So that was all for the boundaries of the orbits. I really hope you understood because uh, these are very important. Uh, so the most important things that we studied in the orbit are the uh, at the junction of the roof and the medial wall, we saw the optic canal. At the junction of the lateral wall and the roof, we saw the superior orbital fissure. And at the lateral wall and the floor, we saw the inferior orbital fissure in front of it was the inferior infraorbital groove and apart from that we had lacrimal fossa anterolaterally and trochlear fossa anteromedially and uh, some grooves some foramens that we studied right now let's go ahead and talk about what lies within the orbit the contents of the orbit so obviously the first content of the orbit is the eyeball obviously it is occupying anterior one third of the orbit most important content and then we have some fascia uh, of the orbit which is orbital and bulbar orbital is the fascia that is covering your this entire bone of the orbit and the bulbar is usually related to the eyelids all right then we have the extraocular intraocular muscles we are going to talk about these muscles in my next video we have important vessels including the ophthalmic artery superior and inferior ophthalmic veins and the lymphatics mostly these are coming uh, you know are coming from the optic canal and superior orbital fissure and then we have the nerves you have the second third fourth fifth and sixth nerves entering in the orbit and finally the lacrimal gland very important content, content of the lacrimal apparatus that is uh, involved in forming your tears and uh, the orbital fat is also lying within it so guys that was all for this video the boundaries and contents of the orbit in the next video i will be discussing the uh, extraocular muscles and the movements until then thank you so much for watching